Nuber. Nuba. <laughs> stuck, it? It's it's indelible at this point. My goodness. Well, don't worry. Just we're not gonna let a we're not gonna let a, a rough name hold us back, Rose. Don't worry about that. We can always we can always exceed the, the reputation that's been ascribed to us at the outset. But when we talk about reputation, these two teams have it in spades. I think one of the most things the one of the things that you and I are most excited about is the seeing these front lines clash and the desk has already sort of started that narrative, right? Is this Alpha Yi? going absolutely mental and, and sort of dominating, or is this tried and true veteran squad that looks so good in the dive meta Boston going to be too good for them? Oh, did, did you see how relaxed Mirror looked? Getting the shoulder rub? He's not sweating right now. And yeah, I, I like think it. that he has a reason to at the moment, just knowing how well Washington Justice did in their last matchup. They did just beat the Gladiators 3-0 that just beat the Mayhem 3-0. So, right. Transitive you know. property. I, I like that. I like exactly. that. But you know what? The, the most, the most, I guess, standout part of this this Justice roster was a player that we rarely talk about, I feel like, especially the one that when he, he sat next to Alpha Year, but Flora had an incredible series. Uh, you know, we're seeing a player now who was really hyped up to be this young gun, uh, looking to step into the shoes of Giants in previous teams like, you know, New York. Ready. Flora was incredible, especially on that Hanzo in that previous game. So. One for me to watch here. If he can continue this trend, then the Justice are truly a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. I love that you brought that up because, you know, it's the Hanzo for some of those more long-range maps, but when we're heading over to Antarctic Peninsula as our very first one, it makes a lot of sense that Flora may try to come out of the gates here on the Sombra. Looks like both teams kind of poised to come out with the dive. Uh, and this is where I start to have some questions. You know, we, we talk about Smurf all the time being one of those Winstons in the upper echelon of Winston players in the Overwatch League. And Mirror himself had said that his Winston's not the best. So this is going to be a huge litmus test here for Washington to see if they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Boston's dive. I mean, I'm surprised they come out of the gates not on a rush comp, right? This is the yeah. kind of map that you can, your sub level is the kind of map that definitely allows for that. Perhaps the Justice are anticipating a dive comp, don't want to have to play rush into it, but they're coming out with, yeah, Mirror on the Winston. Normally, Van Best comes in to, to sort of fill that role for this team. Let's see how it pans out, though, because Birdwing and Decay have been every bit the dynamic duo that they were suspected to be, and I'm still waiting on this Boston boom, which hasn't happened yet, but Flora struck blood first. It's Decay falling. Jigod's gonna get so low here, too. Okay, well, the DPS of the Justice that we kind of hyped up have already gotten to work here. Alpha Yi <laughs> barely escapes getting taken down there by the Tracer, recall it to health. But it's all been about the Washington Justice to start this off, and Flora opening the account on someone like Decay is huge. Alpha Yi getting to play the Tracer and not the May, you can see why the Justice make this switch. Yeah, I mean, uh, what a Giga Chad move, though, right? By Alpha, you just kind of going forward, trying to dome Smurf and then get back to the team. Unfortunately, gets punished for it. But you absolutely need to start thinking about how to adapt to this if you're Boston. You can't just keep getting hacked here as Decay is also going to be on the receiving end of that one. And uh, Tiro under a little bit of fire, but really looking at how Boston Uprising are going to counter the dive. But the latest episode of Demon Slayer, hugging Ezuka, is just like you know, sharpening the sword while the demon's attacking him, and just so focused on doing that. That is what uh, Terry looks like <laughs> to me right now. He had FD God throwing packs at him, and he just ignored him for for the time being. But eventually, Boston start to assert themselves a little bit more effectively. Right, it's going to be a tough one here for Alpha. He's definitely playing from the back foot. Boston eventually get themselves sorted for this dive. Okay, so Boston going to go ahead and take back control of the point, but it's now down to EMP versus EMP. So Boston Uprising, they want to try to take control of this high ground and look for an opportunity to get Bird Ring in position to get this EMP online before Washington do. But, oh, Washington strike first. Yeah, that EMP the floor has been sort of diligently building up over the course of this round. Most teams often try to target a backliner with that one, right? But Decay looks like he got caught in the crossfire, and Alfie was ready to catch him. Sleep Dart again coming out. Nicely done by Teru. It's the second time he's intercepted, uh, or rather, excuse me, Izzy Arkin. The second time he's managed to intercept Alfie getting into the backline. Still for Boston. They maintain control of the point despite losing Decay earlier. It begs the question maybe the Tracer wasn't the primary target. I don't think that was the right target at all. I mean, yeah, sure, you got a huge source of damage off the board in Decay, but then you ended up leaving the back line alive to be able to keep Smurf up. Now you've got the Primal you're going to have to contest with, and such a huge ultimate from the Justice is off the table. Boston also still kept control of the point. This is devastating here for Washington. Keeping Izzyaki alive. 
Name of the game, just as Teru also was being tendered to. FD got popped already. Both fleets went for it at that moment, in fact. As the Arnolds were feeling the pressure on both sides of the field, it's going to be Izayaki falling first, though, and an opening here for the Washington Justice to exploit the heal gap they have access to. But the Boston Uprising haven't been shifted from the point yet. Smurf is just determinedly standing his ground, and will have a primal rage to use in moments. He uses it right now here. Mirror looks like he was looking for Burton, who doesn't have an escape mechanism. Eventually gets caught and blasted over the walls. Looks like you're gonna end up seeing the Primal Rage used there to be able to stall for as much time as possible as Smurf's able to land back down and... He still got it! Maybe not even just to stall! What?! I, bosses still have the point, that is absurd! Isiaki, back in the front here! Looks like he's ready to roll, but Smurf couldn't be tended to do quickly enough, it's gonna be Decay Lee striking with the Pulse Bomb! The Lee Jay God is living on the edge! And eventually Alpha is able to circumvent the shield and bring him down! And bring the Justice with a chance to take this round away, but they've gotta win it all from here! Okay, could you have imagined, like, the Primal Rage coming out oh and then Birdring actually getting the EMP online for that one? Uh, Boston could have just potentially taken oh, the round right then and there. Oh, but now... Flora, <laughs> please don't do this to me. Come on. It's not Rialto. What are you doing? <laughs> Kick over there. Oh, listen, he's still... He, he, he had the reflex. Yeah, good on him. Best guess who is where he actually needs to be, though. Birdring. That's an EMP go, Smurf. It's an easy pick up on Mirror there. Izzyaki is looking for some targets to heal up here. Been able to stave off most of this scrutiny via flankers for this round, and now he's set up nice and nestled here to give Smurf all the support that he might need. It's going to be a nano boost deployed over towards the Winston, forcing the rally from FD God. And EMP coming in after the fact that Alfie is able to fight Izzyaki once more. This is good for the Justice. They're hanging on. What a key fight win at a crucial point in the round. There's not much that Boston Uprising can come back into this one with either. It's going to be on raw kills as Decay is looking to try to get back here on the Tracer. He's got to get there fast. It's just Smurf and he's barely hanging on. Lee Jagon gets the rally. Smurf needs to top up. Quick smart. Lee Jagon the one stalling the point for the time being. The rest of the Uprising need to be in position and enough time has been bought for them to get here. Pressure on Teru. Birdwing trying to, again, consume as much of his armor's attention as possible. But Decay is here and on the scene. Alpha is under a lot of pressure now, forced to try and blink away. But Mirror's Primal Rage is here to the kill on Izayaki. Both teams lose their Arters. It's all bricks. It's all health packs for the time being. And Decay does not have the recall here. Trying to get topped up. Gonna be Pax in the pulse, but before is gonna bring him down just in time. It's Lee Jay gone now. Gone. No healers for the Boston Uprising. No chance to take the round. The Justice make a 55 60% comeback here that's so impressive cool. especially knowing how much momentum boston yeah. uprising had generated with their ultimate control i thought it was doomed for washington until they were able to start to grab that control back and now they're they look pretty good on the dive uh, maybe not a look that we were expecting to see confidence from Mirror for, but he looks like he's vibing, he's feeling it right now, and that Winston doesn't look half bad. And now they get a chance to play the brawl. Mirror's had a great round. Six final blows, three deaths, Alpha he gets seven and two right now. Birdry not able to get on the board at all, and Decay with the poultry, three final blows. So despite Boston being wow. within a stone's throw of a, a, a round win, the Washington Justice really had the output in terms of kills, especially in that last fight. So the Justice now going to revert back to this rush style with Mira, and Alpha Yi will be on the Reaper. So not the first team today to try and bring Reaper into these comps. Smurf had best be careful. Uh, you absolutely should be careful about that one because Winston's hitbox is huge, but I think Birdring uh, needed to hear your advice first. That uh, should probably not happen. Birdring getting caught there deep behind enemy lines, apparently without a translocator. And I mean, the Justice make the cursory response, right? They just speed boost in and secure that kill. Birdring switching to. Okay, it's the soldier. What? Switching to the soldier here. To ca why are, okay, why are the most mobile heroes in the game for the Boston Uprising here seem to be getting called out? The Justice are dictating the tempo here. Yeah, Justice is just gonna go up towards the spawn. I mean, My even friend. Birdring right now, gonna get caught out there by a hack, has to be able to back away. Boston Uprising, though, they're sticking to this dive composition despite the fact that Alfie has already been such a pain for them. You can't dive the Reaper. Who, who are you diving? Wait, who are you Murdering diving is on the done. Justice? Murdering is done with his summer. He's like, yo, yo, give me that history. <laughs> yo, give me that. No. Decay never heard of him. Yo, it's about me now, baby. Let's go. <laughs> the Uprising again. They want to leverage his summer, I guess, against the Reaper, right? Like, you really have him out range, but the Justice aren't giving you this breathing room. We just saw the Gladiators work so hard for most of the series to give Kai the space and then the peel that he needed. 
I don't know if Decay and Bur or Birdrick specifically is going to get that here with a dive comp. I don't think he's going to get that here. I mean, you've got the Kiriko at least to be able to Swift step to you to make sure that you can get that healing a little bit faster. But you also need to be able to help heal up Smurf. Uh, Smurf is about to get a Primal Rage on mine, but he's also half tier. This is exactly the problem that the Boston Uprising are running into is that Washington, they're just so quick to the punch. There is Decay falling to a, a wayward punch from Mira. Flora was waiting on the low ground, constantly disrupting Smurf, and then just plays out the EMP. This is, this is not close at all. The Justice are really functioning. They're playing to their win conditions here, and the Uprising look all over the place. Yeah, we'll give Easy Arthur credit there for that solo Kunai kill, but it's going to take more than that. Uh, well, hey, at least you, you you got him down once. That's the raid boss taken out of here before he's able to get the death blossom online. But the coalescence coming out here now. How do boss uprising stand up against this? Smurf able to get the primal rage at the very least here, but the justice are looking far more durable in the running game right now. Smurf desperately being healed up by uh, yeah by Izayaki, but eventually he dives away from his Kiriko and gets blown up by Alpha Yi. Oh, we'll dump it down and make it two. The death blossom here from Alpha Yi catching Izayaki on the high ground. Sound barrier in play for the Boston Uprising, but only three individuals benefit from it. And that's not nearly enough to stand up to the torrent of damage that the Justice are unleashing. Not remotely close at all this round has been, and now Smurf is up to the Doomfist just to try and buy a little time. He don't have the savings to buy another second in this round. 100 to zero. Oh my goodness. That is... The Sojourn? The... Man, that is absolutely... That's raw. That's that, that was just a raw experience for me, watching that play out. The Washington Justice say, OK, we'll play the Winston comp. We look a little bit better. I, I mean, our Sombra our floor is getting a ton of value with Alfie is popping off. Then we'll switch over, play a rush comp, punish your Winston, play the Reaper. I mean, geez, the Uprising, they do not look great so far. They are all over the place. Yeah, they look a little dizzy right now, trying to figure out how to deal with this aggressive posturing from the Washington Justice. Uh, always trying to strike first and strike harder, as you see Mirror trying to get really close to the back line of the Uprising. Uh, what? How are you going to let this happen? Boston Uprising can't just let the Washington Justice walk on them like that. Yeah, that's tough, tough stuff here for the Boston Uprising. They've been known to be able to play fast and hit hard, so they're going to hope to recapture some of that essence as we head into Hollywood for our second map of the series. The Justice start with a convincing lead.
fly and I'm flashy. It's the reason why the people always ask me, where you get that? Where you cop those? I've been fresh to death since a snot nose. Kid on the block with the inner sneakers. The girls all flock like they missile seekers. The party don't stop, got different features. Exclusives, different colors, you can't get them either. I came in a stunt, that's what I go for. I don't buy a pair, I buy the whole store. A price tag's just a number to me. So I never miss a shot that I want and I see. Swish. Flora off a incredible first map performance on Sombra. Nine final blows, zero deaths. Alfie by his side. 13 final blows, three deaths. And just for no particular reason, we'll go on to Bird Ring next. Zero final blows, six deaths after switching off the Sombra to Sojourn with a dive tank. Getting very little done in that second round of Antarctic Peninsula. Far from the auspicious beginning. The Boston Uprising were hoping for, Rose. I'm going to just blow right past the stat that you just said about bird ring there. Uh, <laughs> hey, no significance at all. And no bearing yeah. on the outcome, in fact. No, never, never. I mean, I mean, I, that sounds like my ranked games, my DPS, mm. like not being able to get final blows. So, so surely that's what happens in the Overwatch League. But right? I mean, there was a big, big damage contribution though. So don't worry about it. I mean, bird ring was, it was there. It was in the mix. He was present physically. And uh, yes, the Boston Uprising were in the server. Um, get ejected from it summarily though, as the Washington Justice really put it together on two separate stages with two very different compositions. I mean, they're throwing their stuff right now and it's perfect 10 from the judges. They're looking very good on Dive, they're looking very good on Rush. It's a good sign for this team going forward now, especially into a map that requires a bit of both, depending on how you want to play this first point. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense that Boston Uprising would want to go over to Hollywood. We just saw this got picked by the by our last teams, the Florida Mayhem, for the similar reason, just being able to be able to play the dive on both the defense and the offense. But you know, Boston, this is a key difference for them, is they really are trying to go all in on the Tracer's Sombra dive. And we end up seeing Legion gone actually getting switched uh, in to be able to play next to Twilight here. Uh, so a little bit of a change up in the support lineup to be able to play the Brig and the Ana. So maybe expecting a dive from Washington Justice also. Defense. Bring the hogger. No. Let's go, no. baby. No. Oh, yeah, a little bit, little bit of argy bargy, a little bit of, uh, you know, check those corners. Uh, <laughs> sniffing out bird ring if you will. Okay, we're going to stay on theme, though. Uh, it's going to be the Junker Queen here for Mirror. So, we've seen teams play this Frozen quite often. It's really positional, right? There's a little bit of maneuvering that needs to be done by the attackers at the start of this match. See, just like trying to group up together and make sure that they don't fall to bird ring super hacks in the back. See, bird ring has been able to translocate out already, but Washington, they're gonna be able to take this approach behind the point to be able to force the team fight to that. Now it's just gonna play on the point, they get through the choke, he's got free. Now it's time to start swinging. Tarnish connection is decent, Lee Jagon flattens here as Mira leads the charge. Trying to wrap around the corner against Twilight. So both supports are down. No healers available here, but the uprising still plenty of damage to output. Bird is really the timing with Alpha Yi. It's going to be a tough one to win here. Bird Ring is sheepishly starting to backtrack a little bit. Smurf to the rescue, though. And the uprising have the upper hand here when it comes to this defensive side. I was really smart to be able to put Legion gone on the Brigida right away, just expecting that something could come out here from the Washington Justice that plays a little bit more aggressively. So that's why you have Twilight subbing into the roster, to be able to play the Ana, make sure that there's a hard pocket onto Legion gone if necessary. And Twilight's one of the big reasons why Legion gone even has the stats that he does on the Brig. It's like, what, over 10 final blows per 10? Or, or eliminations, whatever you want to call it, Legion Gone's in the mix. And that's what Twilight is going to up. There's a great point. I think that one of the most successful teams right now uh, have a great career coordination that Hunter and Wicked are set up. Whether defensively or offensively, DJ got to be set up for success. And this composition for the Justice falls flat a second time. Boston uh, look maybe less encouraged to dive straight on the Justice, but as soon as Mirror starts to get out of position or the, the Justice start to overextend for a kill, the Uprising are doing really well, just giving a bit of ground and then striking back when they need to. Especially when Bird Ring is going to have that EMP deal to pepper on top. Like, that's like, I think Boston Uprising are starting to figure out how they want to be able to play against the Washington Justice. Might not have worked out for them on the control map, but they do fare very well on hybrid and S-Moves. 
Yeah, look, and again, a bit more of a static setup here defensively. The uprising are able to sort of set up more than a free-flowing game type like Control. And it served them better so far. Verdring, no, not a great start. He uses the MP in the prior fight. Flora had his online this time around. Teru's gonna pop that Katsune Rush and stay alive here, hoping to set Mira up. Again, those reduced cooldowns can really pack a punch. I like the idea from Twilight there. Unfortunately, the Nano is not gonna be enough. It will be Mira cutting through Lee Jae Gon. But getting Smurf back in the fight is going to be important. He buys a bit of time with the Primal. Decay now has an option to get into the back line. And Eftigol's not having it. He's going to pop. Yeah, that sound barrier pretty much instantly here. Just one tick, though, but it's like the Justice are about to clean up. Oh, I mean, Decay, I think, was looking for an opportunity to use the Pulse Bomb there, but recognizes the follow-up just isn't going to quite be there. We're going to see... Actually, uh, what is a, it was a bit of a swap there coming in from Lee Jae Gon, but eventually decides to go back to the brig, knowing that there isn't really a whole lot of reason for him to try to get back a little bit faster. But the Justice now, they're switching off of the Junker Queen. It was able to find them the success that they wanted to be able to brawl out in that pack room, but now it's time to switch over to the dive to be able to get this high ground. And Decay, that consistency you can only come to expect from a player like him. Dispatch as Ifty got at the start of that fight. Worth pointing out though, Flora had such a good team fight just now that he pops the MP and has built yet another one. He actually got ahead of Birdery in that charge. See, both Sombras have EMPs online for their next fight here. Maybe defensively, Boston may opt to use that once Mira has already committed. Flora wants to get in position now and had eyes on Smurf for a time. There's that EMP. Flora gonna come with one in response to Decay. Caught out in the open. No chance to blink. Dry his eyes out there. And Alpha, you brings him down. I mean, what a smart EMP usage. Who could have expected that Flora would have had one already? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you track that if you're Boston. You probably think you're still ahead by a little bit, Rose, but Flora, I was just able to do so much fighting on the periphery in that previous engagement that he built it up yet again and is ah. able to use it second to shut the uprising down. Uncharacteristic miss on the sleep there from Twilight, but he had plenty of backup in order to deal with Mira. Uh, again, the Justice are headed for the hills. At that point, too, Boston Uprising just had great sustain coming through, and this is another reason why you've got a Twilight on the Ana. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't care. It doesn't matter. There's like Sombra behind, Tracer in front, Clowns to the left of me, Jogi's to the right. Doesn't care. Uh, he can handle himself. <laughs> that's a veteran. That's a true veteran right there. He, he's been through a lot. That's a, that's a real support that's gone through the ringer <laughs> when it comes to some of the things that can move after you in the back line, that's for sure. Oh man, Twilight also has another Nano. That's gonna be another tool online here for Boston. That's a quick one. Twilight's been building up to these also very, very quickly. Yeah, it might be useful against the Winston here. Mira throws the bubble down and Twilight. Just another day at the office, isn't it? Moves on quite happily after dispatching Alfie and sleeping the Winston. What can't this man do? Uh, well, hit, I guess hit the ante, but that's a really bad example given that Mira had the bubble there. Oh! <laughs> Oh, goodness. Hey, what's your sleep number, Mira? <laughs> My god. Twilight absolutely rolls in there. So primal rage here for Mira. Definitely some frustration behind that, I'm sure. But does create a little bit of space on this high grant. You see Alpha Yee making use of the causeway here. But the Uprising want to retake that themselves. And it's going to be an EMP with follow-up. Flora's misdeeds paid back with interest here as the Boston Uprising are doing pretty well in a very staggered fight. I mean, Boston has five, they had five ults going into this one. They still have three remaining as they're able to hold on to the Primal Rage, the Rally for now. And uh, Justice is running out of time. Oh, this is so good. Oh, this is so much better for Boston again. Very different look from this team now, playing this composition. We expect them to excel at this time in a context that really allows them to coordinate a little better. Smurf harassed here, losing a couple players. Uh, for the Boston Uprising here. Smurf's gonna have to double back as Mira oh, is sneaky, beaky like. Uh, taking a page out of Dante's book, huh? Is, is it gonna work though? I mean, you're looking for follow up here from Flora or Alpha Yee. Flora's trying to get in position for this hack. It's a nice hack. It's gonna make it harder for Smurf to have that mobility, but still gets the cooldown on his jump and able to dive straight for FD God. They can't get in at all here with the pulse bomb, but he may not have to. The rest of the Uprising have done the hard work. Well, that's just uh, half of the course, I guess. Sleep dart on Mira as he tried to contest. Twilight shuts him down again. Not a scene. See, no, you slept him, no, no. brother. No, 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 no. You slept the guy. My God. Listen, this I is, this is gone my too far. one fight. No, no, Pete, they're, they're making a... Like, they're actually making it a thing. These players are trying to make it a thing. I have a C9 curse on me. How do I get rid of this? I mean... Listen, it, at Every this point... it single match 
Is that a is that a Charles though? I'm not convinced that's a Charles. Homie was punching out Z's. Couldn't no, I don't hard. think this is this was, but the but the players are trying. You know, they're trying to point out any reason. Because it's annoying. It, we we've been doing this since 2018. Gets in their heads, you know what I mean? Oh, look, I think Exactly. This is definitely we know we obviously know why the uprising chose this map, and this definitely exposes some of the the justice's weaknesses are on this planet map. We, we really thought the Boston Uprising would look much more comfortable. I do want to say, like, it's pretty wild that Twilight doesn't play uh, in the first in the first map, right? We, we we sort of see the shuffle around. Obviously, Iziaki is going you know, to be a mainstay, and if Boston want to play, I think they'll play like Lucio Kiriko, so, you know, mm -hmm. kind of explains why. But the Brigana setup is just so durable, so robust, so reliable for the Boston Uprising. Five sleeps. Um, Twilight, pretty sure certain all of them were consecutively on Mira in the same life of his. Uh, <laughs> very, very difficult for him to, to reach his intended targets. Yeah, and that's what makes the dive so difficult for Washington Justice to be able to run. And you've got an Ana that is as skilled as Twilight. I mean, remember the performances he was putting out last season. Consistently at the top of the charts when it comes down to healing output, sleeps landed, the ability to get those bio needs down, and with a Mental meta that food. is so heavily support favored. Yeah, you gotta have Twilight up there. Okay, not oh, interesting. That, oh. all right, so look, I, I don't think the Uprising is ready for this push here by Mira up to that high ground. DJ got a little caught there. Perhaps the Uprising may be just taking a little bit too long getting sort of situated up on that high ground. See, this time Burner is trying to scout it with a Sonic. <laughs> At least it's only Alpha Yi that can go back after you, right? Like, you're not trying to sniff out for a Sombra. You're really just looking out to see if uh, Tracer's behind you or trying to access your back line. But what is the plan? Austin. Oh. The water tower. I guess no one can really pressure him. Laura probably doesn't have any good sight lines on Smurf at that point. Then we just dive into the cafe, right? Try and finish the kill. Ah, the little interlude there from Smurf that able to try and finish the kill on Empty God gets punished. He's forced back here. Boston are gonna have to reset. Austin have to figure out how to deal with this high ground pressure. I mean, the way that Mirror is playing this, you have the ability to go on top, like you can go down the stairs to get some healing there from Karu. And uh, they've got a nano online already. Boston trying to get something done with this. Twilight hits those. I'm just saying. Sleep Dart goes over Smurf's right shoulder there, and he is able to have his just desserts. Mirror eventually falling here. Flora will be chased down. Smurf gives him a final mercy. So the Boston Uprising again, they have to sort of retool this dive a couple of times. Sometimes Smurf found himself going in and alone. Let's, let's just enjoy Twilight for a moment. Oh, just, just sit down. So beautiful. Just sit down. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, Touches him for good measure. I mean, it is pretty sick. Arno now, uh, with a with buff to her primary fire, can actually like sort of solo finish a lot of those select targets. Not if they're Tracer, they can get away, but she's uh, even nastier after she sleeps you. Twilight yep. is ruling the stage right now. Yeah, this is just a, such a good standout performance here from Twilight. I mean, if it wasn't Smurf also being able to kind of get in there, like, you gotta give credit to Twilight being able to keep everybody up. Uh, Excuse me? Hello? <laughs> yeah, that's a brutal angle. Flora just belts decay. <laughs> Again, Tracer has to kind of, like, tip her hand a little bit if she wants to get on that high ground, right? Can't just fly up there, can't climb no walls. Gotta sit on the, the lift and wait with the rest of us, so... Can you imagine opportunity if there for Tracer Flora. could blink vertically? If you just look up and you blink and you're just on top of a building. So busted. She's already been in like every meta game. Like it just, she just does not that, need that much more help, you know. Well, uh, Boston looked like, like they might need a little bit of help. Looking at the alt economy here from Washington Justice, uh, there's still a ton of time in the bank though. Boston got that cart unlocked so quickly. They've got three minutes and twenty seconds for that cart to not go too much farther. So really looking at just a full slate of ultimates from both sides. I'm expecting a lot to come out in this next fight. Mira really staking his claim to this high ground, right? Knows that he doesn't have the, the verticality as uh, Smurf does. Hey, hit one! That's what I'm talking about. Nice sleep on Smurf, but uh, he appears to have woken up. He's very angry about it. Great stun. Always puts him in the path of the Dragon Strike there. Not enough damage to take down a Primal Link Winston. And in the meantime, it's Decay doing Decay things. Flora blown to smithereens by the Pulse Bomb, and Mira found himself well, up the proverbial without a paddle. He's got Flora now on the Sombra, as he's going to have to try to come back really quickly. 
wonder if Mirror, you have to keep this Annihilation, right? right? I was wondering if there's a possibility of switching over to the Winston, but I think that knowing that you have the ultimate, you've got to go in with that one. Hoping that FD God is going to be there by your side. Who's going to uh, be Alpha Yi? It's okay. It's not a curse. It's not real. It's a figment of your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Again. real and it can't hurt me. Yeah, they were sleeping though. By the way, yeah, enter Sandman once more. Twilight absolutely rolls him, and it's going to be Mirror trying to go for the Annihilation on the point. Pretty powerful ultimate, not that powerful. Boston Uprising convincingly wrap up the second map in the series. Twilight adamant that it was in fact a C9. Mirror not having any of it here. We have a tied affair and one apiece, Rose. All right, Boston Uprising looking way better on Hollywood than they did on our first map of Antarctic Peninsula. Feel like they are able to really take advantage of being able to set up their compositions and you could see how much time they were taking as well before they initiated an attack. Pretty incredible stuff from Twilight. Eight enemies slept, uh, just for, for contrast, Teru 3 like, does get a pretty key sleep uh, at one point on Smurf, right? I've just sort of woken up there. But you can see just how good Twilight is at staying alive very, very hard to pressure down for much of this map here. And this is the Boston plan, Rose, that finally comes to its fruition, right? We saw the Justice come at this from a couple of different axes, but this is the Boston comp. They look very good at it. And notwithstanding control, they should be looking pretty good if they get to play this style on the right kind of map. I agree, but I wonder now that the onus is on Washington Justice to take the map, good. if uh, maybe they try to do something that disables Twilight's Effectiveness. Oh my god, this whole like match is a, it's a highlight reel. The whole map was a highlight reel for Twilight. The guy, guy is so cracked. It is wild. And this is the final moments here with the Ramatra comp. You lose high ground, you are done and dusted essentially. Yeah, valiant uh, attempt there from Mira, but not going to be enough. Boston back in at Shambali Monastery. Oh ah. my. More of a rush map, if we're honest. So you can see yep. why the Justice want to play that. I can't wait to see how this unfolds, Rose, after the break.
you've heard this one before. Two undefeated teams walk into a bar in Hollywood. Only one comes out alive. The Boston Uprising keep their streak on Hollywood well and truly intact with a convincing win against the Washington Justice. And a fun fact, we were looking over the stats and the break couldn't believe it. Obviously, Kalios, by the way, getting subbed in here for Smurf. Let's just establish that as we are headed into a rush map, Shambhali Mola Street. But how is it, Rose? <laughs> I'm giving this one to you. How is it that Teru comes out of that map? Zero final blows. Fine. Zero honor. Zero eliminations. Where was this man looking? <laughs> I mean, there was healing. There was, there was healing going on. It was I, I know, like almost 9,000 healing, but I, th I guess just healing the team. Yeah, I mean, but this isn't even accounting for a defensive elimination. Look, I, well, Kat, he, he obviously also, not. He was also dead most of the time. I guess I should just point that out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, quite a significant uh, struggle for Teru on that map. Yeah, with eight deaths, FD got with nine, and much of the Boston Uprising with like, yeah, like the Spur had one death. Just doing whatever he wanted to. Twilight is the truth. If the Church of Twilight doesn't exist, I'm establishing it right now. Ordain me. Somebody. I'm sure you can get a do a do a yeah, do a course online. Half an hour, I'm sure it's all it takes. Give me you know, sprinkle me with some holly and, and, and water and we're done. Twilight is the truth. The Boston Uprising really figured out there, but they get forced into playing a map that doesn't really lend itself to the dive style. So they have to adapt. They move Kalios into the lineup here, and he's going to be on Diva to start with on defense. I wonder if this is just Boston Uprising admitting that they don't really have their wits about them for a brawl. Antarctic Peninsula didn't look fantastic. They didn't want to run the brawl there either, despite the fact that we ended up seeing that on our second round of labs. Uh, Boston Uprising on the defense, they do want to run this dive again. And maybe just with the potential for Kalios there to be able to switch over if necessary to something like a Sigma that ends up coming into play. But just to see that composition, they go right back into spawn, they come out with the Tracer and also just the Ana Brig. So, yeah, without the Lucio Kiriko, this is the similar core to what the Uprising used on uh, Antarctic Peninsula to, to no avail, really. The Sombra, uh, sorry, the Sojourn and this Tracer set up here. So, definitely still want to have some hit scan pressure, of course. Get down on the Diva if you possibly can. And already the Justice have sort of wrapped around this high ground. The Uprising, because they're playing Diva, not Romantra, they're not playing this like spawn hand style with the main. This doesn't really seem to fit their style. And uh, so they get forced back and have to play much tougher approach with this Diva. I think that's the one thing about the Ramatra that makes it so interesting about how these comps go ahead, up against each other is, uh, yeah, Justice should be able to get up close and personal, but gotta watch out for Twilight. I feel like you're talking about hit scan pressure. You gotta watch out for Twilight. Yeah, well, Ana is hit scan if you zoomed in, just putting it out there. Twilight with plenty of that. Okay, all right. All uh, rise. All rise for the Honorable Twilight in session, bringing the gavel down upon these heathens. Two final blows already for him, and Miro being forced back with the rest of the Justice here. The Boston Uprising looking staunch on defense. Yeah, who, who wants a soldier when you can have a, a Ana that's as good as Twilight? Yeah, well, they don't want a soldier. Yeah. <laughs> they switch. Switch off that. <laughs> exactly. <All right. laughs> they don't even think the soldier's going to be enough here. Uh, and you kind of need to be able to keep the Sombra on pace with the other Sombra, right? Burberry is already going to be outpacing Flora just a little bit there. You got the EMP already what? online, but oh my god, Twilight! Stop! What is this? <laughs> okay, so maybe we see the Sombra switch in order to try and actually put some real pressure down on Twilight because this angle is audacious to say the least. We see a lot of Ana sit up in the high ground there, look through the window, just be able to play this a little bit more defensively. You're going to run something like dive instead of trying to go for that close hold with the brawl. But look at this, Washington Justice have to take so much time to be able to get this close to Boston. Kalios, like, he's never hanging around in these fights too long, right? Just hang around a bit, use the defense matrix, slow up the attackers, allow your backline to reassemble itself, you know, give Birdering Decay time to get in position. Just like this, EMP, well, maybe uh, with something to be desired there. It does catch on to Teru, but FD God's just going to pop the rally. That's just customary. The Uprising still have plenty of ultimates to work with, if not the EMP. I think you're okay with that one. You're really looking right now at the Nano from Twilight to be able to enable Kalios to get in damage. Even Legion on here was good. There we go. Getting Twilight is, is big there. Flora now 
sort of with the proof of concept behind this sombra switch away from the sojourn now the now the washington justice have the numbers they've got good position on the cart here in a great spot to break down this defense of the upright Great. Decay's able to get away. I was worried a little bit there. I mean, Bird Ring's actually going to come back. He was one of the first to fall in that last fight. But there's no real defense coming out here from Boston. Look at that Kelly. Oh, no. On to the point. I had to try to touch. They have managed to contest it, but the nano boost from Twilight came after the d animation from Kalios. So they couldn't keep the Diva Mech nano in the fight. It was a buddy, electric buddy blaster going to work, and Kalios come up with absolutely squat. Well, I guess easy come, easy goes, they say. Twilight already building up a third towards that next nano, but the Boston Uprising are without that first point. Yeah, it's a little bit of a feels bad there for the timing on the nano boost. But at least Kalio still has the ability to come back into this one with the option if he needs to to try to get back into the back with the ultimate. And Burberry is gonna have another EMP online. Look at this angle and Twilight is able to grab two. Yeah. Kalio oh. isn't this for long. I mean it's lined up pretty well for him in fairness. All of the justice trying to make their way up the hill here. But a free player biotic grenade hitting both DPS plus mirror. Could be scary, but the justice have some plans of their own here. How think he's able to Make his way to Twilight, drag himself along broken glass to stick that pulse bomb here. And the Justice are able to outlast the Uprising, and we're starting to ask the question, is the D.Va going to be enough here? Hello. Would Kalios be better served trying to play Ramatra, playing front and center as well? Because Mirror is really able to stand tall in many of these fights here, and even losing a player first, the Justice win the team fight. Ah, uh, you got to try something. I mean, Kalios has been holding on to this D.Va bomb for forever as well. It's going to be great to have that panic reset, but you got to be able to actually win these fights first. And Mirror's going to be working up to an Annihilation pretty quickly, and while you're able to get the EMP down from Birdring, you got to finish this up, and, and then still, Boston has a huge mountain to climb. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a lot to, to bring the Ramatra down, especially in Nemesis form. You saw Kalios dive straight in. Uh, there was an EMP as well to make it harder for Mirror to to gain durability there. And it still took like a good few seconds to, to get rid of the Ramatra there. So, I mean, Kalios definitely doesn't want to stand in the front line for extended periods of time, especially because Defense Matrix doesn't do much to mitigate Ramatra when he's building your head in. Exactly. I, what does Kalios really offer in this particular fight except to try to peel for the back line with that Defense Matrix range? Well, he's definitely susceptible to Sombra here, so the Nana Boost being deployed. Flora gonna pop an EMP reactively, but it was enough time, just enough time for Bergman to get to safety. And here comes Lee Jae gone. Pap those stats, baby. Two for him. Alpha, he finds the pulse bomb late in the fight, but it's not enough to make the difference here. Now we'll stagger this Ramatra out. The durability working against Mira here. As Boston will take their sweet time in dispatching the tank of the Justice. Well, that works out great for them because now the Justice only have 23 seconds remaining to be able to get this payload over that second checkpoint. Mira does have the annihilation, and so you'll be able to see this payoff in pretty big way if he's able to actually get to the cart. Uh, FT got's really low. Somebody heal him, please. It's like he gets back up to full here. Self-destruct from Kalios. That's a zoning one there, just in the doorway. The Uprising know exactly where the Justice is going to be coming from. They're going to rally online here. The Justice will have both their support ultimates. No reason to lose anyone early in this fight if you're Washington. They've managed to reach Kalios, starting to scratch the paint up on that mech. This cart will start to advance a little bit further forward. The Uprising are looking for a window to build an EMP. He has to come online here, but the Nano from Teru is good. Yeah, the EMP is offline <laughs> for now. Murdering gets absolutely turfed there. Alpha be able to run him down as he's trying to build that, revealing himself through the fight. Mirror though, give it the bio, stunned up briefly by the Brick Rally here, the Uprising are able to get back in some form of numbers, and Birdring will be back with that key ultimate in a few seconds. Kalios just juggling this aggression here, backing up a little bit, Mirror doesn't have Nemesis until now, but the EMP strikes at the perfect time, and MD God doesn't have a shield to protect himself. Birdring makes good on his absence, comes back for two, and Decay will always be involved with his killing to be done. The Boston Uprising put the justice to a stop. Right before the second point, too. That's pretty impressive. I mean, the Boston Uprising, especially running that counter dive on a map that has been historically brawl favored, hats off to them. I, they really started to figure it out. And this is one of the reasons why we've seen Boston Uprising do such great work with the dive, is they really understand the ins and outs of the composition to play to the strengths of an individual map. And even though Kalios was on the D.Va, maybe not the hero we would have expected to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mirrors Ramatra, 
was still really great for peeling for the backline. Ichigon and Twilight had a way easier time being able to like, be held up there because of Kalios. Yeah, and Kalios has windows where he can go aggressive, right? Diva's still one of the most potent duelists in the game. Her damage up front with the micro rockets at point blank range is, is nothing to sneer at, right? But the, the rush comp is slow. It's lumbering. You know, Mirat takes his time getting into the fight here. Ah, yes, this is Lord and Saver himself. Have you heard the good word, everybody? Check this one out. Here, Flora. <laughs> My That's goodness. just absurd. Yeah, Twilight does not miss. Again, like it's a tough matchup for Terry to sort of set up into a Twilight functioning. This is so it's actually a pretty similar style as what brought uh, Ruji Hong uh, to fame way back in the day. And Arna that on his own could really take over the game. Twilight channeling that essence uh, every bit as his predecessor did. But look, Kalios coming out with four final blows here. Crucially, Burden with the camp, but he's one death each. So, he was so good at just buying time. Ah, uh, the president. Wait. All right, here comes Burden. Oh, oh, my God. My shield, bro. I like this. Okay, so we have the Ryan Honey, of course, because you really want as durable a front line as possible, right? I mean, Mirrors is going to get forced right away here. And it's like the Justice, the Upper Rising the Justice would try and play this spawn camp. So, what a way to break it and just ridiculous up front damage from this Bastion. Oh God, so smart. Look at the wraparound here, too. You got to be able to punish Teru away. Oh, this is, this could get ugly. You're squeamish, or easily uncomfortable. I uh, divert your eyes. See, so comes the Bastion. Again, wanting to try and pressure down here. Bear in mind, the main is pretty important for the Justice. That ice wall buying. Crucial time here for them to reposition midway through this fight. Both the mortality fields are now down. Kalios' charge goes wayward, but the rest of the uprising pile on in. But again, they don't need a clean fight win, Rose. Just get a couple of kills, have spawn advantage, they come back and they're ready to go. Oh, is... Yeah, they got what they wanted to done. I mean, Terra's so absolutely staggered. Oh, that is... That is punishing. That is absolutely punishing. I, I'm curious to see how long the uprising stay with this, because... In essence, I suppose Bastion really does counter these like broad front lines just because of that that, that front loader damage or the burst damage you have available to you. How long do they stick? Yeah, with I mean when you look at like Bastion or Torbjorn and even Symmetra in some cases, they're just great team coordination checks. Washington just have to play this flawlessly to be able to just catch this Bastion. Yeah. Oh, Kalios tried to reposition all the protect bird rings. There's gonna be a sound barrier committed to the fight either way. So many of these shots from Flora are going to be nothing but glancing blows, but the rest of the watch there just is able to pile in. The blizzard there from both sides here. See, Lee Jagon is able to get clear of it just in time, and Twilight always a nuisance there, playing from that higher ground, but will be accosted momentarily by Mira, who will be able to deal with this back line pretty comfortably. Hello. I think this is when you switch off the Bastion. Greetings. Hello. I, I like now that. Now would be the time. Alternatively, Greetings. you can force it even further. Right now, now, is that advisable? You're just here for chaos, aren't you? Well, Birdring has his opportunity here to act as the centerpiece for his team's composition, so make hay while the sun shines, as they say. Now, that ultimate online, I'm curious to see yeah. what Valley Birdring gets at. Look, it is a slow comp for the Justice. They do have a Lucio, so be out of reposition. I don't think he's thinking about the ultimate right now. Trying to find something to shoot, ideally, is the Justice are cowering inside that building. Oh. Here we go. Goes. El Presidente. Demands the airstrike. No connection though, as we do have an annihilation from Miri. He wants to come forward. He gets absolutely blown out of the water. Okay, with the kill credit there, but a lot of damage coming from Birdring and Co. DJ Gone dispatching Flora here, so you are bereft of your key damage output. This will be uprising, continuing to march on. With the Bastion. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll let I'll him go cook. with it. Yeah. I'll, I'll let him cook here. I, you could honestly. Probably play this up until where Kalios is holding with the Reinhardt. I mean, now you could get a little bit of Fire Strike charge, back up a little bit, but this particular point is so windy and so enclosed that you know, we'll just set the Bastion up here and break the shield from here. Well, it's a great point, right? Because Bastion is normally weaker in those longer sight lines where you have a, a much more yeah. dispersion of his bullets, but when you have to like come around corners at him and you don't have the ability to like, outrange him as much, it's pretty scary. This is not necessarily where, where Birdman wants to be. We wait out this air matrix and then we go. It's a from the case. So perhaps some wires crossed here, but there were quite a few Justice players already sort of committed to the card. They had to very quickly reposition here. We have an amplification matrix online for Twilight. Obviously, that combines in a devastating fashion with this Bastion up front. We're going to go for yet another ultimate here. 
one, two, three. Yeah, not much to uh, write home about there, but definitely keeping the justice on their toes. That, they're going to be able to re-engage here, knowing that Brood Ring's a little bit more exposed, and the Blizzard is going to come out here from Alfie. Yeah, and that, that's the key. The Blizzard there really shuts down the Boston Uprising there. Now, perhaps you'd be inclined to switch off the Bastion if you're Bird Ring. Good to see you. Switch? Any switchers? Hey. Um, not a switcher no. inside. Not one, not, not a one to be seen. <laughs> okay, then. We're going to stick to the Bastion May Reinhardt. All right. I, if you're able to get in there with Lee Jae Gon, you do have the sound barrier, so I'll give credit to that. You can play that with a little bit more aggressively, and there you go. Yeah, so Mira yeah, definitely has the damage output, of course, inside the Annihilation, but the durability, there's no sound barrier. So the Uprising just respond, they stand their ground, and the, the Justice end up feeding themselves into the, the wood chipper, so to speak. They get a minute 33, that's the blue box of victory. We are very, very close here, ladies and gentlemen. The Burby wants to set up a little bit further forward now, forcing the Justice to fight to even get a look at where the card is. This will get messy. Yeah, look at that. You're going to see the card just start eating off the but you can't get there. Okay. 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 Twilight, please. <laughs> oh, yes, El Presidente. Coming up with the goods, the Boston Uprising with a bastion composition to break that frontline brawl. If you can't join them, beat them with style, apparently. Boston succeed here on Shambhali Monastery, a map rose that the, um, um, that the Justice chose specifically to put pressure on Boston, specifically to force them maybe into a, a Ramatra mirror but the Uprising, stubborn as they are, refuse to play that game. The Bastion from Birdring gets his moment to really show us how it's done. And they go up to a lead in the series. Oh, they did their homework. It, that's the story of the last two series we've had so far. The teams that have won have done their homework. Uh, I'm yes. seeing that with the Gladiators. They're able to get that done with just some, some sneaky, sneaky, a little bit of an outsmart, outplay there coming out. But uh, yeah, Boston with the Bastion. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, yeah, if we talk about homework, I'm pretty sure Bird Ring submitted like a crayon drawing. They're basically <laughs> at him in the middle, with a, clearly with a crown on his head and everyone falling over around him. And the coaching staff of the Uprising put their heads together and they figured this composition out. Shamali Monastery is a W for the Boston Uprising. But it doesn't get much easy for them compositionally. New Queen Street, another map where it's a little hard at times to make the Winston work. That's surely what the Justice are banking on as they look to stay alive in the series. Don't go too far. Map number four is right around the corner.
quite the journey we've been on so far through this series, ladies and gentlemen, as the Boston Uprising enter map four at a two to one lead. And frankly, since map one rose, they have been looking pretty dominant throughout this series, going as far as to play a bastion on Shambhali Monastery against the expected rush composition from the Justice. They caught them truly unawares. I did not have Bastion in the upper bracket of our knockout rounds on my bingo card. I really didn't. That's not a hero that I actually thought we would see at all up until, I guess, maybe even the midseason or when your backs are against a wall. But Boston were able to bring it out, put Washington Justice on the back foot, figuring out how they wanted to approach that. Like, like what do you do if you're Justice against that? You still the diva. I think you get deleted. You can play around the architecture a little bit, but I don't know how you approach that Bastion without taking collateral damage. You know, I think if the map was longer, if the Justice themselves were able to push further, then maybe the Bastion's effectiveness gets limited in the last phase of the map where like it's a little bit more open, but that never really became a factor. And you can see here by the map pool, these last two maps selected, the Washington Justice are trying to tailor the battlefield to suit them, right? To suit Mira playing the Ramatra or a similar kind of rush composition. We saw him go as far as Junker Queen, and that looked pretty good at times as well. The Boston Uprising are choosing not to sort of copy this composition, that they're not sort of mirroring their Ramatra style, just finding one that maybe suits them a little bit better. Kalios has been known for a long time as like that off tank player. Uh, so obviously we, we, we sort of see him coming there on the Diva. And it looked really good on defense. I think Diva's kind of hard to evaluate because she's pretty subtle in sort of where her sort of high impact moments tend to come. It's, you know, you're somewhat defensively oriented. You want to sort of create opportunities by time for like really talented DPS players to either work together, the summer and the trace together, or to find sort of solo kills. We're switching here. So Iziaki comes in along Twilight here. And this, and this is the kind of composition that makes you think, right, double flex support perhaps? Uh, it could be like a Kiriko could be on a Kiriko, something like that. But this is the third separate permutation of supports for the Boston Uprising we've seen in this series. And Smurf comes back in at tank. Yeah, we haven't seen the Izayaki Twilight combo too often in the past few weeks. It really has been another like Twilight and Legia gone. And even a little bit surprising that on something like a push map, we would actually see Legia gone get subbed out. So yeah, maybe leaning a bit more into Having a faster paced composition, trying not to rely too much on defense, but going hyper aggressive. Is that something that the Washington Justice were able to do on Antarctic Peninsula? But Boston Uprising want to try to dish that back out, I think, especially with Smurf coming back in to be able to play the tank. And, you know, just to set expectations here, uh, here we see burdering stats here <laughs> on the Bastion. So, uh, yeah, so four final blows, three deaths. Uh, again, maybe like those stats in a vacuum, not, not standing out in a huge way, but. It's the way that you force your opponents to play. When their composition is designed to stand front and center and rely on like high sustain for the Ramatra, this is what you sort of bring in to, to threaten that, right? We saw Mira, mm -hmm. I think just after that, that first checkpoint, right? He dropped in and we saw the Justice try and start the fight with the Annihilation and Mira just yep. exploded. He just, he just vaporized. So they couldn't play that kind of, um, you know, initiative style, right, where they sort of start the fights off on their own terms. So you need to work the Bastion down, find a way to wrap around, flank him, maybe work high ground. This is the kind of map where, again, to set expectations, probably harder to make that Bastion work, just because the flank angles are much more uh, forgiving. And also, there's like, you know, plenty of high ground, especially as defenders are forced back, where it's, it's pretty hard to protect Bastion adequately. You need the right heart for that, as we saw. That's probably not going to be an option, but we did talk about this in the break, Rose, is that Smurf has a Doom Fist. We, we've seen this from him a fair bit. One of the players in the league, especially in the West, that, that goes towards a Doom quite often. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see the Smurf Doom Fist, because I think this is one of those heroes that could actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with something like a Ramatra. We're actually going to see the Washington Justice come out with a Junker Queen. So still going with some type of rush, but really relying on that Junker Queen to lead the helm. The only thing that I have as a hesitation for the Doomfist here is that Flora is still playing the Sombra, but Doomfist is no stranger to New Queen Street. This is a hero that we've seen come out last season when New Queen Street was just released, and Smurf is really good on this hero too, as you mentioned. Definitely could make some work with this hero, as long as he's able to get into a good position to dive with Decay and Bird Ring. 
Yeah, no Lucio for the Boston setup. So it is going to be Ana Kiriko uh, for the Uprising squad here. Twilight definitely gets to play one of his best looks. And oh my goodness, that's a nice little bio nade. And immediately Smurf dives in now. Smurf was backtracking just as that bio came in. So it's unable to instantly capitalize there. But it does force the Justice back for a time. Looks like we're going to have Boston really search for an opening here. And the disruption of Sombra, Flora pressuring Smurf down is definitely something to concern the Uprising fans as it's hard for Doom to really do what he does best when those abilities are locked out. Yeah, I'm looking at Smurf and maybe even Twilight being the primary targets for Washington Justice's hacks. Big commanding shout though coming out from Mirror. That's a great way to kick off this fight for the Justice. Yeah, I mean, we see like the neutral fight here go for a long time until by the looks of things Flora probably able to hack Decay there and there's like a commanding shout. They're able to run him down and, and remove him here. So it's kind of hard to see what the win condition is supposed to be for Boston at the moment. Really taking too long to set up. You know, Smurf is just kind of sitting there on the low ground looking for communication from either Bird Ring or Decay to be able to go pounce on a target. But there just hasn't really been that opening as uh, Smurf has been pressured there by the hacks. I think Izayaki as well with Twilight have been having a little bit of trouble being able to stay focused on being able to heal the team. Look at that. I mean, Izayaki already down to a pretty considerable low HP before Twilight's able to heal him back up. Yeah, so Boston have really not had a chance to start a fight on their own terms here. Smurf is keeping the, the, the barrier contested, so to speak, but that's a disengage. It's almost like he knows that EMP is coming in, maybe. And look at them dive straight back in here. Commanding shout from Mira, and the collapse on FD God. They are ready for Flora to EMP, and they have the perfect answer. This has not been the first time that we've seen Boston Uprising be able to anticipate an EMP coming out from the Justice. And what a nice way to be able to initiate a counter push there. I mean, you saw what kind of what we were seeing from Twilight being able to get a good read on when it looks like Flora was jumping in before. And so this is not the first time. At, at Boston, they have been on point when it comes to being able to figure out when these ultimates are coming through, whether it's the EMP or even like Alpha Yi trying to go into the back line to get a pulse bomb. So here it is. Boston uh, play counter dive essentially in that previous fight, right? We watched yeah. Smurf jump out and then just punch straight back in as soon as that EMP came down. The Justice really need to get this right because Boston is so mobile. Everybody, so, with the exception of the Arna, so incredibly mobile. And look at this, they just pounce on this kill. It's an EMP to set it up and that's maybe a big part of the win condition for Boston. They just collapse on Teru. Tarun will be able to get back from spawn pretty quickly there on the Kiko. You, have a you also have the Infinite Rush available too if you wanted to lay that down on the straightaway, but Tarun is hacked. You have that intel now. Everyone's going to be able to give that over to the rest of the team so you can play around it accordingly. And at least confirms for Boston what ults might be on the board. Smurf bites off a little bit more than he can chew there. He knows that Mira can't intervene in that fight. He can't just teleport up to the high ground, but. Smurf loses in the one versus two there as you're dealing with Terra and FD God who's still definitely forced to be reckoned with on the right day. So Boston, I guess they try and get the back line first. I saw a hack there, so Birdring was up there, but the Justice are back on the road here. They have, of course, Mira with ultimate in hand. Katunia Rush also available for Teru. Chance to make up this, I guess, this deficit they've suffered. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to use the Junker Queen ult. It's so straight going down this pathway. Bot's gonna be able to get back in time. Smurf is trying to get into the back line of the Justice. Yeah. You see, they're, they're trying to win all mirror entirely. They just, just work around the Junker Queen, ignore her if, if at all possible. That's gonna be hard to do now. EMP comes down from floor. There's no way for the Smurf to go. If he gets a Nana Goose, now he's gonna get out of jail free, essentially, with that Meteor Strike. Flats Mirror on the way down to him with an anti heal and there it is. Twilight sets it up with a Bionade. Smurf has the damage. The K finds a quick double. And the Uprising are back on the road. Look at the investment that the Justice threw into that too. EMP, Kitsune Rush. You even had the Pulse Bomb come out there from Alpha Yi. That's gonna be a huge number of ults off the board for the Justice. And Boston are really starting to find their groove again. Bird Ring almost has another EMP online. And that's been able to find a lot of value heading into these next few fights. And especially when you're oh. back in the corner, you got the checkpoint. That's huge. And a kill, so you can keep going here. The EMP for Bird Ring hasn't been developed yet, but it might not be necessary. The stick is perfect. Okay, Mira's basically begging to have that pulse bomb attached at that point. Yeah, it's a bit of a messy fight, breaks down a little bit here. But you get the checkpoint you got what you came for. Birdring walks back into the next fight with an EMP, which is, yeah, like you said, it's the catalyst for Boston starting these fights. 
I think Boston are okay with that. They got the checkpoint. That is the biggest thing that they could have walked away with that fight with. They don't need the extra progress. They can start playing from this position of power. And looking at the neutral here, Boston Uprising are already up. They got the forward spawns. They're ready to activate this Bird Ring EMP. Yeah, and, and again, everyone looking to pile in straight after that. Bird Ring's odds of getting a solo kill here, not amazing. Back on Teru. Try and get caught. There it is. He waits. He heard you. He, well, he waits for FT God to be gone, right? He waits for Teru, basically sat on his own there and is able to pick him up. It was close, but he gets that kill and it's all going to fall apart. Or at least it should have, but Alpha and FT God trying into this fight. Getting rid of both backliders here for the Boston Uprising to not nearly as clean as they would have liked it to have been. Washington Justice there too. They use the EMP without Teru being around. <laughs> that they can stop the progress of Boston. Oh, there's, there's something truly audacious about sticking a Tracer who, in theory, could just recall and, and, and shed that pulse bottle. Alpha, you saw his first rodeo, so to speak. Oh, the timing. Oh, the timing for that one. I mean, hey, you, you gotta be a little bit big brain when it comes down to playing Tracer in this day and age. I mean, that's a thrown ball if I've ever seen it. Sticking uh, your opponent Tracer to get the kill there. So the EMP from Birdring actually gets forced out here. Or he just wants to play for it and stop the justice in their track. So Boston are able to do that at the very least, but I feel like ideally they would have liked to use that ultimate on their own terms, set up Smurf and you know increase their, their progress across the map here. Because yeah, they got the checkpoint, they're probably gonna re-establish that here, but they would have liked to have been far deeper in uprising uh, in justice territory with only two minutes and forty-three left in the game and losing the K at the start of the fight is it's not guaranteed. Now, at this point, Washington Justice could take back control of the bot, but Uprising still have a lot to work with, so that's why I'm not too pressed about that EMP being used so early. Boston are really playing from that power position where they just want to stop Justice from getting any extra push in this part. Note the mirror switches here to the Doom Fist, right? Sick of getting caught outside of the play as the jumping point, just basically being ignored and being jumped over for the most part, even with that speed boost, wasn't able to get involved properly. Teru gets rid of Bird Ring, that's not something you can really account for, but he's able to find the Kunai elimination. Tracer's trade. DK and Alpha E both by the wayside. Mira getting buffeted around, but Flora is able to find the finish on both Smurf and Decay. And this is where the Justice have a real crack at it here. The checkpoint well on the table, and then Slide Stagger on Twilight should serve them well. I don't know if I would have used the Nano there if I was Twilight. Izayaki had nobody else behind him to be able to help kind of initiate that fight. And look at this! Twilight's actually gonna switch over to the Moira to try to stop this car before it gets to the checkpoint. Yeah, might be that. Also a little bit more survivability, right? But Spurf gets stuck with the bomb and Alpha Yi finds two. He's looking to add to that tally for now, but the justice of their eyes squarely set on this checkpoint, which they look to achieve here. It's going to be a translocate out there by Birdering, and we're getting closer to parity now. You can see that yellow line the, the Justice are in striking distance of the Uprising's total. Oh, look at that. Bergering's actually going to go over to the bot, try to decloak in time, knowing that the Boston Uprising are back, but it looks like, yep, going to stop it there for now. Bergering gets caught by Flora, hangs around a little bit too long. Smurf was there, but didn't he have a target? It was caught in between cooldowns. Mira takes a bit of damage, falls back, but is able to turn his attention towards Smurf. He came by to stick it with the pulse bomb here, but Alpha Yi is still running rampant through the back line of the Uprising, and there's a sound barrier to add to the mix. The Justice know they're so close to getting this total. They're so close at forcing a map five, and they refuse to let up. Twilight gets rid of Empty Gun at the very least, but two supports there trying to stick together, and EMP comes in after the fact. Can Smurf stay alive? He jumps out, Birdring found a Flora, and now gonna try and keep the cart stalled, but Alpha Yi's gonna return to pluck Smurf out of the mist, surely. Smurf trying his best to stay alive here, but the Washington Justice with 20 seconds left in the round have gotten in the lead. This is devastating here for Boston. If Washington Justice keep this up, I mean, sure, Decay can come back and get the bot, but the Washington Justice came what they were here for. That's just to be able to steal that lead back and five seconds left. Boston have to win a couple of fights here now. The Justice knew they didn't have to push the envelope any further. They had the lead and now we're in overtime. Smurf charges up a punch, it's a mutual knockdown between him and Mira. Katsune rush legs over is Yaki, but he's on the back foot, getting chased down by Alpha Yi all the while. Both supports though have been removed for the Washington Justice, so the uprising during the game. Make no mistake, but it's a very slim margin and they cannot leave the bot for any reason. Oh, what? Alpha Yi, how? Where? Twi did Twilight must not have had faith there? 
He's, he's not done. He's coming back for more. Four is in position. Smurf is hacked. Mirror now into the fight. Meteor Strike used by Smurf to reposition, but he had no health when he appeared, and FD Cop finishes the job. Here comes Flora. EMP, and you better believe it's just what they needed to end this round. Decay disintegrates. Izayaki absolutely dominated. Flora able to play from the low ground here, and that's the translocate out. The uprising say, see you later. We'll go to the next map. No way. way. I, I mean, what? No way. No way. Yes way. <laughs> yes Boston Uprising way. had a pretty big lead in that so, map. So it's not the first time we've seen teams on New Queen Street having to sort of switch off the Junker Queen, right? Doesn't you know, it's yeah. very easily circumvented, even with like a built-in speed boost. Yeah, even where, if you have a Lucio to help you get there, you like the verticality. And we just saw the Uprising dance around the Junker Queen. She was a cactus, they didn't want to give that a hug. Eventually you see the switch from Mirror. A very, very good Doomfist player. I mean, on multiple teams, even on the Vancouver Titans, we've seen Mirror play that Doomfist. Very experienced. And Alpha Yi really comes alive there. Very impressive performance here. It's 11 and 4 for Alpha Yi. Best scoreline in the server. I mean, Alpha Yi has really started to wake up in this season. This is a player that has come over from the APAC region, was able to put up some great performances over there, but I think the Western audience may be just not as familiar with his style of play and the Tracer just really putting in some work here for the Justice. So on top of the fact that, yeah, the Doom the Switch really paying off for them. What better way for this to go than to map five? It's Lee Sung Tower coming up to cap off the series. And you should be scared for Boston. Control's not been their strong suit today. They're gonna have to dig deep and find a way to win from here.
Well, we thought we were headed to the Twilight Zone, ladies and gentlemen, but a map fire was written in the stars, apparently. Alpha Yi, incredible tracer showing on New Queen Street to take this series all the way to a decider. 11 final blows and four deaths. Large number of key pulse bomb sticks, and it's the Justice playing their spin on dive that once again, control gets the better of the uprising. Which is so surprising, right? Because we look at the team like Washington Justice and we say, ah, Brawl. We see Mirror, we see Ramatra. That's usually what we've been able to see Washington Justice find that success with. But yeah, we started the series on Antarctic Peninsula, sub-level ended up being a dive in favor of the Washington Justice, and then they do it again. Like Smurf was on the Doom Fist and Mirror said, ha, huh, anything you can do, I can do better. And, and look, map five. Yeah, Mirror's Doom. It's, uh, it's been around for quite some time. One of his pocket picks in the past comes to fruition. And hey, Morris, we've talked about it. We've seen Houston pull it off on New Queen Street, right? That very same map, that made it look good. Twilight, maybe you think he has to just try and fade back into the fight. Maybe that's why he makes that switch. We know that Mori can still find value, but once that fade's gone, well, your your vitality is soon to follow. Lee Jae gone sub back in here. So it's going to be Izayaki, Lee Jae gone that same setup that we saw from Boston on Antarctic Peninsula. And they better hope the battlefield of Lee Jae Tower suits them much better than Antarctic Peninsula because they were getting beaten in the Sombra head-to-head, -head, so much so that, you know, Birdwing switches to Sojourn. They were getting beaten in, beaten in the Tracer head-to-head -head as well, and Mirror looked very good when he had to play Winston. They were well ahead when he was on Ramatra. The Justice may have the wind in their sails here. It's up to the Uprising to find an answer. Well, this is going to be Boston Uprising's pick as well, so you have to hope that they've been able to figure out something to be able to deal with Control Center. This is going to be the round I would expect the Washington Justice to be able to take easily. This is such close quarters. Look at this, and it just screams Ramatra Brawl. And, uh, no. The surely not. No, Def surely Con, not. Defcon 1, get him in the bunker, ship him out to Control Center. <laughs> no. Wouldn't that be something? I mean, is yeah, I mean, this is this is starting to look Oh my god. Like okay, well, I mean, the Justice have to respect this, and they have to find ways to play around it. Bye. There are obviously plenty of flank angles to work on this map, but they're a little circuitous. It can take some time to really establish. I don't know if Alpha Yi will... Yeah, won't stick to this. Not without, like, a solid front line. It'll be the Reaper for Alpha Yi. Well, I actually think the Reaper is the perfect response here to Bird Ring's Bastion. You're going to see Washington Justice spot this right away and back off. <laughs> oh, they're they it it off. Off by this. Get me the heck out of Dodge. There's an Ice Wall in the way. The Justice are not able to pull their forces out. Now they're going to stand their ground. FD got absolutely minced by Bird Ring. Florida able to find that kill there. So it's pretty back and forth stuff here. Alpha Yi gets pinned. So it should be the Boston for a moment. This is able to play this sort of close corner with the Bastion, but they're giving some ground now themselves. I mean, they lost Izayaki. The team is no longer in this fight, and so that's really picking to the sustainability of this there. All right. I think we're done with this, right? I think we're... Surely. I think we're done with the Bastion. No? Bueller? Okay, we run our bash hey, then. to Electric Boogaloo. Flora already uh, <laughs> entrenched uh, sort of in this flanking position here. So straight away, we'll try and hack uh, Boogaloo out of that tank mode. And actually, is a Yaki that catches those hands first. No immortality field required yet, though, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue for the Baptiste. Pressure on Lee Jae gone, Mira. Yeah, okay, he takes a face for the best here, and oh my goodness, the double with the grenade! Boogaloo! What a layup! And a third to follow up onto Teru and the, ju the Justice had better figure this out. They're going to need an answer to Bird Ring and they're going to need it yesterday. Oh my gosh. Well, Bird Ring could just go sit up at the door, right? Then where did the Washington Justice come from? If you sit up there, you know exactly where the Washington Justice can access the point. But I also really like this too. I mean, Bird Ring's just going to go get into a position to be able to let this barrage go. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know how much I believe in them. We'll see, we'll see. Flora, under a lot of pressure, has to translocate out. So his team is down a player for the time being. A lot of pressure on Birdring. The Smurf is able to stave Alpha Yi off. And the President issues a dictate. Get out of my face, he says. This set of control belongs to me. Well, it's working so far. Flora even couldn't get a chance to use the EMP there. That is a tool the Washington Justice can use to get back into this. And uh, Mitch, they're going to need all the help they can get for Birdring's Bastion.
I think they gotta throw everything in the kitchen sink at this one to get him out. Oh, oh, BMP. So look at that. Flora drops right yeah. by Burdery. Pops that instantly oh, here. Yep, Rizzy credit to the bleed break off. He's ready with an answer, but it's just not quick enough. Iziaki and Burdery are the beating heart, the core of this composition. Without them, it cannot stand. Oh, and some of us not rising are finally forced away. The justice here now need to position themselves in such a way as to not give Burdery the ability to mow people down. Still sticking to it though. Boss and Uprising believe in the Bastion. And they've got the May Blizzard as well. That might be a great way to be able to give Boston some space to work with. Get Burgoon back into position. Here they come. Um, he's going to wrap around here, isn't it? Spot the warden away instantly by Lee Dragon. Respecting the threat of the Reaper. So Alpha says, beam me up, Scotty. Play from the high ground outside of the Blizzard. Yeah, well, the Uprising have noted the Reaper's position. So it's going to be hard for Alpha to get in here. Cool Burnley. Burnley's hacked now. Oh, no, that is not. No, it's nothing covert about that. Oh, look at Alpha trying to go for the instant death loss. It is cut short by Smurf. But the core is able to find the kill on Burdery. Mirrors Annihilation looks pretty good, and the Justice now have that lead. They're within striking distance of a first round. Classified territory, and with Flora with an EMP2, this surely should be all wrapped up for this first round for the Justice. Austin are still sticking to this Bastion, but look at Flora. Look, look at where he's going to come in from. He wants to try to get behind the team and yeah. initiate this fight. Oh, no time for a Salberry, the perfect EMP! Sent to be the perfect before, you can't ask for more! They're on charge, but not nearly enough damage from Smurf to shut him down. And the Boston Uprising and their Bastion comp get sent packing. Washington Justice won the round we expected Score. them to. And the Bastion was a good effort. You know, nice attempt there from Boston when he was able to work out on Shambali Monastery. But Ready. this time around, I'm starting to sweat a little bit for Boston. Washington Justice looked so good on Control Center, and now we're moving to another round where Market also plays Crawl. Maybe even the Symmetra version if we wanted to see that. What is this? Oh, it's just the 2K. so absurd. He follows it up with another kill there. But, like we talked about earlier, the flank angles are far easier for Flora to navigate. And EMP comes up, what, twice around, if not more? Yeah. They're almost guaranteed fire wins. I mean, Flora hits Birdwing, Iziaki, and Lee Jagon, who almost has a sound barrier. The only thing you could have used to protect yourself from the EMP is if Lee Jagon could get a safe sound barrier. There's no chance of that, because the Uprising are coming back off spawn. They're not in position, they're not spread adequately. And still, we're going for it. We are going to spur from the right. <laughs> Definitely a pocket pick of his in the past. And the Birdwing Bastion. Jesus, take the wheel. Okay, I, I, or Legion got to take the wheel, maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, to be fair, I've already deified Twilight here. I might have, you know, run out of sort of my bandwidth to, to make gods of people so far. <laughs> Birdring hasn't quite, I don't know if I can give them that status yet. If they win here, I'll strongly consider it. I'll get someone else ordained in the meantime. This is good. I'm going to rush Mira down here. Birdring less of a factor in this fight, but Decay is on the Reaper now. So not, not the May, no May wall involved here. It's definitely going to be Decay trying to add to that upfront damage, more pressure on Mira. Well, that was one of the reasons why Washington and Justice were able to make that Reaper work. You breathe in behind the Bastion, you end up getting those critical hits, and then you're able to get away. I also just hate Bird Ring where it hurts, but Decay can now play a little bit of a bouncer duty here for Bird Ring. It's going to keep the Reaper right next to the Bastion safe and sound. Only way you can do is get behind it, and Here's Johnny. Tomorrow goes for the EMP. It's a trade though. FD got to get a fall at the start of the fight. Big charge there from Smurf midway through the battle. And the uprising shrug off the Justice who's trying to start the fight with the EMP. What is it now? That sure oh, works great. Right. Is the Aki with the coalescing? It's a switch! Just to be able to kind of <laughs> put the sustainability. Oh. Okay, Birdry. All right. You have me going there. I, I suppose. I, I was uh, I was gonna be a believer if he had stick to it. Sombra Reaper Ryan. Ryan is here against the Mantra. I mean, this was a debate earlier. Oh, okay, Lee Jago, don't. No, no, no. I think there was actually a teleport there from Alfie just to make sure he didn't get knocked off the edge, but it was a close thing. FD God dispatches Bird Ring, but he gives up his life for it. Often uh, the ammo for your boy FD God. Still with four players. The, the Justice want to go for this fight. They may have not been expecting the sound barrier, though. Jerry trying to hose ball down with his whole lesson now should last longer than the sound barrier itself. And Mira gets into the thick of things here. The death boss gets locked off now. The annihilation's still ticking. Mira though, lacking 
back up. Alpha is out of the picture here. So Decay solo Reaper right now. He's able to bring Mira down. Meanwhile, slap fest between the two supports here. Decay able to push towards Teru and FD God, prevent them from getting onto the point here. And the Uprising are stalling. They still have control, and it's getting a little bit scary for Justice. It's getting out of hand. Murdering's gonna have an EMP as well. They boss an Uprising could just take it here, especially now Smurf is back. Murdering needs to get in a good position to deploy this EMP, maybe. Stagger it to shut down the Death Blossom. He's revealed, he's gonna go for it now, and so he does two plays in with him, and God gets a sound barrier off first. That's so crucial, is the Ark is gonna come up with the call, and so an empty God is punished once again for his sins. Smart, swinging for the fence, but it's gonna be Alpha again coming in hot and heavy with the Death Blossom. He's able to back up just a little bit, gets the charge after the hack, but can't connect. Alpha Yee intercepts him with the Hellfire shotguns. The Justice are back in the round. They have got a four EMP now. They might be able to rotate to do that. And Mitch, they're one win away. They're one round win away from making it forward in the upper bracket, sending Boston down to face off against the New York Excelsior. You want to just get it out of the way now. There's only two spots on the line in the midseason, and there's the EMP. That is Yaki clearly. Extra sensory in this perception there, able to fade just before the EMP came in. But Smurf and Mijay gone. Don't have that luxury available to them. They're caught inside of it, and they are shut down. So the Justice win what is perhaps an expected fight. They leverage the EMP to stay in the lead here. Boston biding their time, working up towards a coalescent, towards a death blossom. They know they need just one fight. Maybe take another eco push here, unless Smurf is able to lay everybody on their back with the first shatter. Yaki oh. too, but... Teru got shut down! He couldn't get the coalescence off, he got hacked from behind as he tried to go for the ultimate and it might be the difference maker for the uprising. Bergman comes up with the antidote to the chaos at just the right moment. Smurf can't stay alive though inside that annihilation, he's got no way to go with Lee Jae got shut down, picking down inside the death blossom. It's the Justice still in control right now. Mira, indomitable, refuses to be moved here. He'll stay and play out in the open and the uprising have one more chance to stay alive in the series. Bergering has the EMP, that's going to be the saving grace here for Boston, otherwise, yeah, Washington Justice might just have enough time to get Flora his EMP here. Kay's hacked right now, can't wait, walk through the opposition, the sound barrier is going to be here, Bergering holding on to the EMP, when is he going to go for it? Right about now, and he gets out straight away, shut the front line of the Justice down, and the follow-up is delayed, but it's there, the Kay gets himself to the sound barrier from Empty God is belated, and only Flora really benefiting from it alongside him. We're locked at 99, now the charge from Smurf to ward everybody away from the point. Flora translocates in a last ditch attempt to win this map here and now, but it's not to be. Boston are gonna take it all the way. Boston tying up the round, and now we've gotta see whether or not they can put the money where their mouth is and uh, take this next round. We're going over to Gardens. Mitch, I, I would have expected here that Boston maybe will be able to get something done with a dive if they want to lean onto Smurfs Winston. But Washington, they only really have a few avenues to be able to play this Ramatra. You're looking at White Room, you're looking at behind that point as the primary way that they would want to approach these fights. This from Flora. EMP, he gets clipped. Just as he goes for that ult himself. So he gets shut down by Birdring. Just the, the very edge of that AoE from Birdring catches him out. And that's like, looks like where it all went wrong. He wasn't in a great spot anyway, but we're going back to it. It's going to be Ramatra, it's going to be Reinhardt, doing it out in this head-to-head. -head. And it's all on the line for these teams to stay in the upper bracket. Trying to just pressure down the shield right now. So he's got a lot of sight here for Flora, but these health packs are going to be so important. Terry lingers just long enough to keep the stall going. Point wasn't even unlocked yet, but he wanted to make a point, I suppose. Faded away to safety, so no harm done. Next spot's Mira, out on his own. He's going to go on a Nemesis form, but he takes too much damage. The Justice split off from their tank, or are split. Whichever one it is, there's no way to win this fight now. If there's Boston Uprising, they're playing an aggressive game right here. And we've asked for this tale all time of Reinhardt versus Ramatra. Looks like the Reinhardt's gonna start winning it out for now. Smurf just playing such a good game, being able to hold the shield, give Decay and Birdring time to work with so that they can get into a position. Look, look at this! Izzyaki's gonna have a coalescence online. Washington, I don't think you wanna go through that way. Yeah, they have to filter in from White Room. No real options, like you mentioned. That's where all oh, the pain plays from! Izzyaki gets cut down by the EU Bora. That coalescence cut. Desperately short. Still, the Justice don't have a huge 
away in Lee Dagon, immediately going to go for the Sound Barry now. The Uprising want to go from ult to ult here. Justice have a slightly later Sound Barry though, and Swerve overextends a little bit into a much more durable Justice than he anticipated. The Uprising already able to amass 40%. Did Justice get back in after expending both support ults? I mean, what a huge hack there from Flora. That really opened up the gates there for Washington to be able to get back into this one. Now it's EMP versus EMP. We've got Death Blossoms on both sides as well. So it's about where Boston are going to try to make their next move. There's no coalescence for Teru. You're not too worried about going through White Room when that's offline. It's the Annihilation, though. That's what the Uprising have to push into. The EMP comes in. Here's the Death Blossom coming through. Big EMP! Five players shut down on the side of the Justice. Decay trying to make something happen with the Death Blossom, but it's not to be. Alfie cutting down two in the front line, and Izzy Yaki trying to make work for the Coalescence. It's just empty. God, and he knows his efforts are in vain. Better to regroup and go again. So much off the board for the Boston Uprising when that EMP Death Blossom didn't work. Now you're looking at the Earth Shatter versus the Annihilation? I give that to Mirror more often than not unless he's gonna get shattered. Now, yeah, Mirror gets a given to him. Don't, uh, yeah, don't be fooled. Faze able to pop that Annihilation after being given a chance to get back up on his feet. And now for you there, the Smurf lays down the Shatter. No one's gonna protect the Reinhardt. Decay chimes back in, though Mirror coming out of Annihilation. Good disengage from Boston. And then they come back in with the Reaper at the four. It's three for Decay. And a strong claim being made to recapture the point here. Doesn't get much closer than this. Actually, it looks like it's going to be a photo finish between these two teams, especially knowing that the Washington Justice are going to have another EMP. EMP coalescing. You're trying to strike first here as the Justice want to get back into this one and finish it fast. See if Flora can actually get into a good position to make use of this EMP being checked so far by Birdering. There it is, over the top. Smurf and Lee Dagon are affected. And Smurf with the objects of the Justice's focus there. Hello. So the follow-up more than readily available. And we see Washington now continue to extend their lead, going into the next fight with both support ultimates. This next one, this one's going to be messy. Going to be the Coalescence and the Sound Barrier here for Washington Justice to try to shut down Bird Ring. Bird Ring's EMPs have been pretty big here. But this is Boston Uprising's last chance to try to keep this playoff room alive as they look at the buffer bracket. That is EMP shutting Teru's Coalescence down. It's going to be belated Sound Barrier from MD Gold, but Decay has the Death Blossom. Boston are going to take the point back just in time. Washington Justice couldn't have been any closer. But they have to give it up and they use both support ultimates. Perfect EMP from Birdring. Look at that too. Lee Jagon still having the sound barrier. Boston Uprising. This is a great look for them. They can use this sustainably. Try to make sure that they don't fall victim to Alpha Yi's Death Blossom. But Mitch, it all comes down to this. The final fight to see who stays alive in the upper bracket. The loser dropping down to take on the New York Excelsior. No elimination here. But an easier path to the knockouts, or rather to the midseason man. This is what these two teams are eyeing off. All right, the hatches are battened. It's go time here. The Justice step up to the point. They're taking their time a little bit, hoping to build some of these key ultimates. Ah, they probably won't have the support ones to work with. Morgan's hack on Smurf at the start of the fight here. Empty got himself this hack. It's going to be a sound barrier from Lee Dagon. Here's the K. Strikes first. Gets rid of the Lucio. The Annihilation could be an issue here. And Alpha Yi found purchase with that Death Blossom. Lee Dagon is down. We're in a three versus three for the time being. And Mira wants to surge ahead. Birdring, the advice to maybe step away as quickly as possible. Here, the K trying to keep the points stalled out with the Justice Ice in numbers. They have the durability right now. Wall point up, Decay again, forced away, but here comes Smurf. Charges up a punch, definitely sidestep by Mira. The hack comes into the new system. Mira can't even block this damage coming in. This could be dangerous. Here's the EMP from Birdring, and this is gonna end it. Teru collapses here. Alpha Yi tries to dip his toe in, but Decay has another death blossom, and that'll be that. The Boston Uprising claim victory here. Hard fought as it was, they vanquished the upright, uh, uh, rather the justice, oh goodness, and sent them down to the lower bracket. That last fight had me dizzy, Mitch. Like, how could you have ever predicted that that would end up being in favor of the Boston Uprising there? It looked like Washington Justice had the perfect responses available to be able to deal with the Boston Uprising aggression, but they just weren't able to get it done. That I mean is amazing for the Boston Uprising. Look, it doesn't get much closer than that. It really came down to the EMP timing and Birdring, especially in that last round. They were basically perfect. 
There was a key fight where there's a coalescence, you know, in motion from Teru. Brody was able to hit that EMP. In fact, all through Lee Jung Tower, Flora having a tough time keeping up. You know, even on Night Market, where he sort of tries to translocate onto the point, go for the EMP. I mean, Birdring has his half a second earlier, shuts Flora down, and that's been a real difference maker here. We've, we've gone on about the Ryan versus the Ramatra, but Smurfs able to do so much to create so much space. Sombras really are the, the keystone of these compositions. The Reaper switch from Decay also really paid off. It really did. I mean, that just allows you to put so much pressure onto the opposing tank. You could tell how much trouble Mirror was having, just being able to approach some of these fights. And so we're going to end up seeing both Decay as well as Birdring have impact on this match. But we got to give most of that credit to Twilight. Yeah, look, I think Twilight's a huge part of what lets Boston get to that last map in the first place. He obviously gets subbed out. It's, it's a different composition here. But there are some of these maps where he's legitimately taking over the game. Hollywood and Shabali Monastery. These Ana performances don't happen often. She's a very powerful hero. We have a lot of very good Ana players in this league. Uh, you know, some of the very best, of course. But Twilight consistently stands head and shoulders above them. And look, the comparison between him and Terry, you can really see what difference it makes to have, uh, you know, a legendary Ana on your side. The disruption he's able to, you know, bring by sleep darts. Solar kill potential, uh, you know, backed up with, you know, his other support there. Really impressive stuff. 42% sleep dart accuracy, pretty incredible when you're constantly being carried by Sombra and Tracer. Incredible performance from Twilight over the course of this series. And less than four deaths per 10. Very good considering how much dive pressure he's under. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that it's a good honor like that that really allows the partner support to go heal the front line, right? Especially if you can be so survivable by yourself, you're not necessarily looking for a pricky to pocket all the time. And then you can also kind of return the favor. That's why we see so much impact from the back line of the Boston Uprising. And hats off to them. This was a hard fought, well earned win for the Boston Uprising here today. Two really scrappy teams get to basically put their best on offer. We've got to see a bunch of Bastion compositions from the Uprising. We thought it might lead to their demise at some points at Li Zhang Tower, but they, they kind of push it as far as they can. They end up switching up. And you've got to give credit to the Justice. They're going down to that lower bracket to cause absolute havoc. So keep an eye out for them as they advance through these knockouts. What a pleasure, Rose. It's been great casting with you. It's been a ton of fun. We're going to head now over to the desk to break down what went in this match and look ahead at the rest of our knockouts. All right, see ya. Rose, yeah, it's been great. I'm going to run. Yeah, Bye. you too. Oh. <laughs> 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 you know, you know the players oh, are happy when they yeah. say that word. Oh, <laughs> like, nice. Emotions, like that. man, it's an emotional moment. I love of those course, aggressive. <laughs> at Boston, I, I mean, that was that was a nail biter. And yeah, they that are was. Staying Bang in alert. the top it bracket. Closer and than I thought it would be. Yeah, uh, closer than most people. A would lot have closer. Uh, yeah. I mean, at the end there, I was like, well, I guess Washington has it. There yeah. goes my prince. I thought Washington won for a moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all right, that last cost so round was they. absurd. We were, we were joking about it. I mean, the point flipped on that last cost round every, like every eight or nine time, yeah. times. I mean, it was like, retake. Was crazy. No, no, you retake. Okay, now I'll retake again. Now we'll just, let's just keep trading the point. But, I mean, that's just what happens in these in close, intense scenarios. People make mistakes, they slip up. It's about who can make it work better under that pressure. Yeah. So let's, if you had to summarize this series, is this just two teams both playing insanely well and keeping it close, or is that both of them just making a lot of mistakes and it, it looking more like a ball brawl and a bit messy? I mean, I, there were mistakes, but I think both teams did play well. I, I wouldn't criticize either of these teams. I think they both look strong. I think they could both take out uh, many other teams in this tournament. Um, I think it's an impressive showing from both of them. I, I wouldn't be worried if I was either of them. I would, I would yeah. feel, for justice, I'd feel, you know what, we're still in this, guys. We can still qualify. They're going to have to shake it off. Um, if anything, it was impressive that they even forced him at five. I thought push was done. I mean, Boston had a pretty big lead, but what these, all these teams with the lead on push are throwing it away. It's just, it's not what it used to be. It's not what it used to be. Yeah, to be fair, this is a meta where the lead is less brutal because it's such a dynamic comp. It's not, you're not holding static position. Yeah, I, I, I gotta give Washington credit. I think they've played up to their opponent. Like, Boston Uprising is a really strong team, and Washington Justice gave them, like, a tough battle. Yeah. I think the concern for Washington is that they are like up and down. Like you lose to the New York Excelsior just a week or so ago, and now you go toe to toe with the Boston Uprising. I think if Washington Justice plays like this tomorrow in a rematch against the New York Excelsior, 
like they should have that match and then it's a question of how far can you go in the lower bracket right so um i i gotta get credit to washington justice i think that was a really well played series by a team that going into this season we didn't really consider a contender right. Right. i mean we were talk we always talk about alpha e but just the whole team in general i think just leveled up a big time and even just uh just watching this match you know they had a very close fight with Boston and up, up until the end I think Washington could have won mm. had things you know if they've made some of some less mistakes but yeah, I think tomorrow is definitely going to be an interesting match for Washington I just I'm on the same boat as these guys like I don't think they should be too sad about this loss I think they should be happy and just focus. I will say that. They looked sad. They looked they like, like they had their yeah. heart broken. That's why, like, that's why I'm saying it's this. Like, the cam, comes down. But the camera's camera is like, like seconds, right? You know, it's yeah. seconds later, right? So, of course, they're going to be devastated now. That doesn't necessarily mean tomorrow they can't pick themselves back up and play. I mean, yeah. if they get, get sure, a win tomorrow, there was a lot of energy. There was a lot of energy they yeah, invested in that yeah. series. It's like, take you gotta, you in a series like that. And you got to get back on your aim game tomorrow. Get back on the horse. Not the reason. Yeah, but wait, what? <laughs> Need the other horses. Yeah, they fell off the horse, but oh. now they have to get back on it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was a devastating loss. We saw it in the player cams like that. It hurts when yeah. it's that close, yeah. but if you can make it that close, then you know exactly you have what it takes to, you know, take him down tomorrow. So let's see if they can get it done. For now, though, we do want to take a moment to chat with the winners. Just the thing again. You're doing really Wrong way. Wow. Wow. Oh, <laughs> are, are we good? Like, what's going on here? What, are we good? All right, everybody, post-match interview time, and we got Bird Ring from the Boston Uprising. That was a very close match, but you guys came in clutch. You guys were able to get the win against Washington Justice. What do you think gave you guys the edge today? 자 오늘 일단 승리를 축하드리면서 어 굉장히 손에 땀을 지는 경기였습니다. 하지만 끝에 가서 보스턴이 어, 좋은 모습을 이기게 되셨는데요. 오늘 승리 좀 어떻게 거두시게 되셨나요? 어 일단 저희가 좀 즉흥적으로 조합을 꺼내가서 좀 경기 대회에서 보여준 것도 있어서 연습이 덜 됐지만 어떻게 좀잘 돼서 좀 기분이 좋고 <웃음> 좀 되게 아슬아슬했는데 어쩌겠어요 뭐 이겼으니 일단 다행이죠. I mean, I think uh, I think it was sort of the improv comp, I guess you could say, uh, that sort of worked against the Washington Justice. Uh, it's comp that we didn't really practice a lot, but uh, it's, it was those comps that really uh, came into light and came in clutch that were able to get the win against Washington Justice. You know, overall, I'm just very happy uh, that we got the win against Washington Justice. Is one of those, I guess, uh, something that you said, uh, a comp that you guys didn't practice that worked, is that the Ryan Bastion comp? Because that's my actually sec second question. I think that one really came in clutch. It was something that we haven't seen before, and I thought it was very interesting. So what was the thought process uh, behind the Bastion pick? 자, 방금 뭐 연습을 안한좀 이제 조합으로 오늘 경기에서 좀 좋은 모습을 보여줘서 그게 좀 어, 승리를 거두는데 큰 도움이 되셨다고 말씀하셨는데 그 조합들이 어떻게 좀그 우리가 봤던 라인 그 바스, 바스 조합 좀 그런 건가요? 맞죠? <웃음> 네, 그거를 이제 어떻게 해서 생각을 하게 되셨나요? 좀 그게 굉장히 재밌는 픽이었다고 생각을 해서 네, 좀 여쭙고 싶습니다. 어, 라마 러시 상대로 일단 뭐, 팀원들의 약간 괜찮아 보인다? 이런 생각에 이제 하게 되었었고 리장에서까지는 저희가 준비를 아예 안 했었거든요, 이 컴포를. 네, 좀잘 돼가지고 어떻게 아슬아슬 했지만 다행이네요. Yes, uh, so Birdring does say that it is uh, the, the Ryan uh, Fashion comp was one of the comps that they didn't really get a lot of practice. They just thought of it after watching the Romatra Rush comp and the teammates just thought, hey, like I think the uh, this Bastion thing kind of, I think it's gonna work. So they tried it out, it worked. Uh, on the Giant, however, it was never practiced. They had something totally different, but because it worked on uh, the third map, they sort of uh, wanted to try it again and it worked. And you know, Birdwing says that he's happy that it worked. And yeah, I think it was very entertaining and it was very clutch at the same time as well. Final question. Tomorrow, you guys are going up against the Los Angeles Gladiators, who looked very good as well. What are your thoughts on the Gladiators currently? 자, 마지막 질문입니다. 이제 내일 글래디만 이기게 되면 한국으로 가시게 됩니다. 글래디에 대한 좀 개인적인 소견이 있다면 좀 어떤 어떤 팀인가요, 글래디는? 좀 이길 수 있을 것 같으신가요? 글래디전은 확실히 워싱턴전보다 더 자신 있고요. 자신 있었었고 글래디 만나면 오히려 저희는 글래디를 응원했었던 게 메이엠보다 글래디를 더 선호했어가지고 네, 내일 좀잘 해보겠습니다. 
I think well, I think I want to say that it's, I'm more confident going into that match. Uh, even for the match be, uh, that we just placed, I think the Gladiator. Uh, I we, I have more confidence in going up against Gladiators. We actually wanted to play the. Uh, we, all, we we were sort of scared of the mayhem, but we're actually happy that the Gladiators are going to be our opponent for tomorrow's match. All right, Birdring, that is it for the interview. Thank you so much for your time, and again, big congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thank you so much, Birdring. Thank you so much, Danny. Interesting. Why do you guys think that uh, they would prefer going up against the Gladiators or have more confidence in their match against the Gladiators versus their match against the Washington Justice? Well, I think, I think they'd rather face the Gladiators because if anything, the Gladiators are a little bit more of a predictable opponent. They're probably going to play some more of that on a break, Tracer Sombra style. Uh, you know, a comp that I think Boston's pretty much happy to mirror absolutely anybody on that comp, um, save for maybe Atlanta and Houston, but I think Boston would still take the mirror against those top teams anyway. So I think they can expect more consistency from that. Whereas we go up against Mayhem, Mayhem's going to be pulling out the Lucio Moira Reaper. They're going to be like running it down into you. And no matter how well prepared you are, that style is always very difficult to deal with in a match scenario. Also, known gameplay related, Birdring revenge matchup against his old team. Mm. Uh, LA Gladiators. Yes. You know, he's been eyeing we that one. We love a good storyline. Didn't drop a beat to actually <laughs> mention that one. And speaking of uh, things to be dropped, uh, drops. Yeah, chat, that one's for you. Uh, you Boom. can get some uh, if you are uh, watching the Contender Spring Series Finals, which Looks are starting so on June the 9th. Uh, so uh, check it out over on uh, alwaysleek.com slash path to pro. That's where you can find all the information, beautiful skins. There will be drops if you're watching. And uh, yeah, so sweet. it's very great. Yeah, we love that. So good. So, so good. good. Uh, another thing which is drops. so good <laughs> <laughs> are our teams and drops. Start nights in my head. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Uh, of course, if you're taking a look at our updated bracket, uh, LA Gladiators and Uprising are cruising through the top, whereas the San Francisco Shock, the Florida Mayhem, New York Excelsior, as well as the Justice are on the brink of elimination. Drama. Uh, any unexpected results here? I mean, the Gladiators <laughs> the 3 with the Florida Mayhem? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think that's... I'm not super surprised Gladiators won, but doing it a 3-0 in the, yeah. the fashion in which they were able to achieve it, that was really striking for them, especially after some kind of rough regular season performances. I do think, though, these lower bracket matches tomorrow look rough. I mean, 